Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Now that I have some more subscribers, I'd like to reintroduce you guys to some of my snakes and also go over some info about them in general. So in this video, I'm gonna introduce you guys to Lila, my monocle cobra. Beautiful snake. And we're also gonna go over monocle cobras in general. So go over some inf information about them and learn about them. If you're new here, I post videos on venomous snakes. So if that's something you enjoy, please subscribe. So here in the United States, the monocle cobra is one of the most common species of cobra in the venomous keeping hobby. And due to that, they are bred in the United States. So this one is one of those. This is a captive born monocle cobra I've got from a friend about six or seven years ago. She was very small then. Now she's about four feet, maybe a little longer than that. Big girl, perfect personality. She's very laid back, just an awesome snake in general. And again, due to them being very common in the venomous keeping world and being bred over and over and over again, it's led to mutations, what we call morphs in the reptile world. So you can find them in many different colors, albino, leucistic, melanistic, all these types of things. I don't know too much about the morphs. That's about as much as I know. But where are they found naturally? Naturally, they are found in South and Southeast Asia. Throughout Asia, very common. Where do they get their name, their common name, monocle cobra? Now it's common names in general, there's usually many different common names attributed to one snake, but there's always just one scientific name, Naja Kyuthia. Now they get their common name, monocle cobra, from the O-shaped pattern that looks like a monocle on the back of their hood. The reason for this pattern is to deter predators. So when they hood up, it looks like there's an eye looking at them and it can scare potential predators. And the hood also is used to make themselves look bigger to scare away a potential predator. And the hissing, same thing. Now cobras are awesome because they do everything to get you to leave them alone. They hood up, hiss, they'll even headbutt you. So strike with their mouth closed. They do everything to avoid confrontation. But these guys are rodent specialists. So they're gonna be around areas where people are because people attract rodents. And due to that, there's many encounters. Unfortunately, some people resort to killing. Other people resort to calling somebody to come remove the snake a trained professional to come get the snake. So let's talk about their venom. Like many cobra species, these guys have neurotoxic venom. And they have postsynaptic neurotoxins. What this means is that they bind to specific receptors and block nerve transmissions. This leads to flaccid paralysis and respiratory failure. And the reason for this fast-acting venom is for their prey. Now, when we look at venoms, we look at the prey that they eat because it targets those prey, those prey animals. Because what good is it to give an animal cancer or something of that nature if it's gonna take a long time for them to die? So the venom components are those that are gonna cause death quickly of the prey that they're going after when looking at venoms also, and what they do to people, we're just collateral. It's not intended for us, it's intended for prey. So again, they need something fast acting to affect the prey quickly so that they can get food and not get injured themselves. Within their venom, they also contain cardiotoxins and myotoxins, but primarily neurotoxins.
Now what do these snakes feed on? As babies, they typically feed on amphibians, but when they get older, they'll feed on reptiles, they'll feed on birds, they'll feed on rodents, small mammals in general. And this is gonna lead to where they're found, their habitat. Now, many snakes have learned to adopt environments that we've created. For instance, farms or anywhere people live because people are messy. Pets they have, things like that. It attracts rodents. And then where food's plentiful, that can lead snakes to adopt a new environment closer to where people are because there's prey around. And these cobras are one of those. So many of them can be found in the fields where there's farms and just anywhere where there's plenty of rodents. But on the other side of it, there's snakes that prefer undisturbed habitat. But when talking to researchers and those that work in the field, they will tell you they can go out in the jungle looking for these animals and find maybe one or two in a week. But if they go to a farm or rice paddy field, they can find 10 or so in a couple of hours. That's how common they've become around human disturbed environments. And over time, this actually leads to different behaviors, such as coming out different times a day because they've adopted a whole new lifestyle. So as I film more videos, I'll mention more in depth about differences in the venom and differences in behavior due to human impact and just the different lifestyles some animals have adopted because of, again, prey, availability of prey. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And another reason I wanna reintroduce you to my snakes is so that you guys can let me know which snakes you wanna see more of, what types of videos you'd like to see, and just give feedback in general. But I love you all, hope you have a good day. Thank you.